This is Shane Graham, former NFL kicker, now kicking coach, and today he's going to be training us for the NFL. So my name is Shane Graham, played 15 years in the NFL, and then once I retired from the NFL, I became a coach where I coached special teams at a few different universities. I got into private coaching after that and uh, kind of made that my business. Once I finished college, it actually took me about two years. I went undrafted, got cut from training camps, finally made it in Buffalo where I finished the season in 2001. The next year I filled in for an injury. And in Carolina in 2002. Then I ended up going to Cincinnati and played seven years there. That's kind of where I kind of staked my claim is where my career kind of really took off. After that, I bounced around New England, New York, Baltimore for a couple games, Miami for a couple games, New Orleans for a couple years, Houston for a year, and then I finished my career in Atlanta. And that's where I retired after I left Atlanta. How are you feeling today, bro? I got treatment done yesterday, got dry needled, so that's good. Body's feeling pretty good, legs feeling pretty good. I mean, we're gonna see, this is my first time ever working with a kicking coach. I've never been coached how to kick field goals. I've never been taught how to kick, anything like that. It's all just been me. I grew up playing soccer, and now we're here. We're gonna see what he thinks. He could tell me I'm complete trash, and maybe everything you guys see on the internet is just fake anyways. We're gonna see today. What you so, want to start with? I'm kind of just gonna so follow what you do say. Do you so have a routine you typically do? It's funny you ask that Shane because normally I start out with some regular stretching and I like to listen to music while I'm doing it which is why I got my Raycon everyday earbud. And y'all might think I only listen to rap music at the field but really I'm a country guy so that's what I'm listening to right now. Nobody thinks you listen to rap music. We know. Plus, Raycons offer amazing audio quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. And if you don't believe me, just look at their tens of thousands of five-star reviews. I bring my Raycons to the field with me every day, and because of their eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, I don't have to worry about charging them every single time I go. And because of their noise isolation and three customizable sound profiles, I don't just wear them at the field. I wear them at the gym, in the airport, and while I'm editing videos, too. Unlike other brands, Raycons come in a wide variety of colors for you to choose from. And the best part is the optimized gel tips keeps them in my ears no matter what workout I'm doing, which is especially good when I'm kicking. What a ball. Nah, seriously, these things do not fall out of my ears. Click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash botkin to get 20% off your purchase plus free shipping. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now we're warmed up, let's get back into it. I usually just come out and sky punts is kind of like my warm up to just like swing my leg vertical. Okay. And then tap some one steps, one and a half steps and kind of just Have you ever go. done no steps? Yeah, they're kind of my enemy. But no one's ever before. shown you how to do it. Correct. Not, not correct. So I'm most the type people, that's falling back. yeah, and yeah. that's that's what we're gonna do because no step kicks, in my opinion, are are very important for ball contact and making sure you're keeping an inside out swing path. I think a lot of times I see guys do it and they fall backwards. Their momentum of their chest is ahead of the ball before they hit it. So they have to get behind it in order to hit it because when we kick a football we're never ahead of the ball we're always behind it so there's a way to do it where we'll be able to get your momentum through and push your swing down towards the target cool i'm gonna just follow what you say you're the pro you're the okay. coach we can start out with one ball we'll be fine with one ball right now so i've seen adam on the internet kicking footballs i know he's got a strong leg i know he's got a lot of potential i'm curious to see if there's any things we can work on you know you see someone who's able to strike the ball well there's not always a lot to fix but there's always little things you can fine tune and you know and just kind of polish the edge so that's kind of what i'm looking forward to today is, is maybe just having a little bit of a polishing of an already sharp edge to start off typically if we're going to plan about right here where I want you to be is one footprint wider and I want you to pull your toe back to the paint the end of the paint and the reason why is if we're up here in our plant when we're making contact our chest and body is already ahead of the ball that's why guys fall backwards because it's the only way they can get behind the ball the angle of my my femur and my tibia and fibia are almost straight down so when we're kicking we're actually at, at more of this angle but we have body lean because of centrifugal force because of the movement and momentum. So why I say move over one footprint and back is so that you can kind of create that lean. So this is what I call a no step pass. This is really just loading my quad. So I'm really just bending my knee and putting my foot kind of behind my glute. It's important that it's not here, it's back behind the path that I'm gonna swing from, which is this direction here. Hopefully I hit it good on the first try. Okay, so let's move this up. Start out showing your foot to the ball. Just one of those. That's all we're looking for. Okay. Back, so here, back. Pretty dang good for the first time. It say it feels so weird, it, but I guess I'm not falling back as bad. You're as not I would. falling back, but it's different. Okay, yeah. 
And the reason that this makes more sense is your foot and your body are in the right place. Really focus on trying to kick your foot through the ball to where they're coming out where those laces are. Okay? I'm telling you, it better a lot of guys doing one. it for the first time don't hit it that well. So the workout we're going to do today is really going to be just observation and then maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, taking through some of the drills and things that I think can help polish a kicker. I think there's not always things that need to be fixed, but yet I think if you show someone certain routines and certain things they can do, it can help them create that comfort level that puts them in a place where their routine gives them confidence and that allows them to have all the days that they kick be in a confident level so that they're comfortable when they ever do get to do other things where they're uncomfortable. Now, how far do you normally hit your one steps? Wherever you want me to. I like warming up closer. Usually I kick on that side and there's the road over there. So yeah, I, I usually yeah. kick them pretty far and if I miss short, then I do. For sure. Um, that way we don't have to chase over the fence, but I'll, wherever you want me to warm so, up. Uh, let's just go. I mean, I always, Ideally, hit, mine yeah, from, that's what I I always hit mine from 35. My thought process is exactly what you kind of already negated with the, with the no steps. Yep. But with a one step, I'm in such like a try and force it uh -huh. kind of thing. So I feel like that jab step, like if I kind of just bring it back a little bit and I'm just jab like this, it kind of I mean, that, gets me going towards the ball. That looks great. Okay, so, so I'm not going to have you change any of that. Okay. But here's what I want. I want you to imagine that your chest is pointing towards that cone. Okay. Okay. A lot of guys want to point their body towards the ball, mm -hmm. but your body doesn't go to the ball. Your body comes through this space right here. Pretty daggone good. Did you feel like you did anything different? You probably didn't, right? No, it wasn't too different. I just tried to hold this a little bit, uh -huh. which is why I feel like it kind of so, faded so on me a little bit. So rather than but... holding it, yeah. I just want you to think extent. Let's try this. Back up, put your uh, right toe where your left heel is. Allow yourself more drive okay. to get through this. How'd that feel? Good, way more yeah. power on it. Yeah, and you really probably didn't even have to swing harder, did you? No. So that drive step, your, your really short drive step, yep. what can happen is when you get into your full swing, you might start to gallop versus picking your feet up and actually driving. For sure. No, so my I, drive I, just, I just don't want your body to feel this. I right. want it to feel that versus right. up and down. For sure. And the other thing that I'm noticing, looking at a little bit of your film from my phone, is you throw that left shoulder across pretty hard. Yeah. So put that left shoulder across your body right here. Okay, get a little bit like you're like bent over at the waist. So you're here, now pick your follow through up as far as you can get it. Okay, actually get down a little lower. All right, now do it. Now, straighten up, put your arm right here, now follow through. Yeah. It's a lot easier to get your foot up For without sure without this blocking it yep. when you're doing it. Now, my retirement belly might be getting in the way for me, but when I stand up, yeah. my follow through goes up much easier to here. For sure. But if I'm here, ugh, yeah. that's as far as it'll go. So put this over your shoulders, try not to bend it like a squat bar. And I want you just real easily without like bending it over your back and just do some swings where you control your upper body. Just like kind of full steps jog. Yep. Okay, you feel the difference in how that keeping your chest ahead of your shoulders lets you actually swing up and through yeah. versus punching at it and finishing over to the side. I feel like me taking diagonal steps makes me not think about, are my steps right? Is there, this right? It's kind of just like, it's free. Just It's just me and the ball and let's just kick. There is something to that and, and I can explain some of that later. You just want me to- I just joke. want you to hit it. Okay, so let's make sure we put our next ball this exact same spot. It's a good ball. So when I'm looking at a kicker, what I wanna see out of them to know that they're qualified for one of these professional leagues, I would say it's consistency is the big thing. It's hard to measure mental toughness and, and, and how you handle certain things in a game, but knowing that when you strike the ball, how often are you striking the ball well? Are you able to not just hit home runs, but hit base hits every single time? And that's what we're looking for uh, in a kicker is to be consistent so that you can show that you're not going to have streaks and go up and down. So those are the two spots you got to. As human beings, our bodies are amazing the way they can compensate and make up and, and do things outside of what your 
thinking the perfect line is, mm -hmm. okay? Do you know what your target line is? So what, what I want you to do is if you're gonna take these angle steps, I want you to feel like, okay, I've squared myself up, even if I'm just like this. Then maybe you might wanna put your plant foot here yep. and then find the angle that you want to leave the ball. Right. The reason I like stepping backwards straight is I can square up directly to my target mm -hmm. and I can walk directly away from it. Then I can fix it if it's not quite right. Then I put my toes together. I draw the line on my toes and then I make sure that my plant foot is pointed to my plant spot. Then I step back up into my stance so my hips are taking me to that space left of the ball. And then from here, I look up one time and I bring my shoulder so that my right shoulder lines up going to the ball so my chest is left of it. And then I can be here. So there's consistency and there's, there's, there's science to why I do it a certain way. If you wanna keep it your way, I'll still show you things within your stance that can help still make you a little more consistent. So the big thing I want here this left foot always has to go there. The one thing I try to tell guys is with my jab step, I wanna feel like most of my weight's on my front foot. I have a little flex in my front knee. My back knee, I really don't want a lot of weight on it. Mm -hmm. But when I lift that left leg up, it lets me fall like a tree. And I want you to try to think about if your foot drives through the ball into the, the bottom part of those laces, then you're not thinking so much chipping as it is driving the ball through contact and compacting to your foot and then lifting so the ball gets the natural height yeah. without trying to kick it high. Okay, you struck that ball pretty solid, didn't you? I just tried to not think about it. Just, yeah. Just do me. But, but you can see where you hit the ground about right here. Yeah. You hit the ground over there before. Mm -hmm. And you still hit the ground and popped your toe a little bit, which is yeah. why you hit that outside panel. So let's just try to hit hit another one here. That sounded and that looked better. really good. I How kept it more feel? narrow in my back. I feel like sometimes I'm, I gotta kick this hash. So I'm widening out yeah. my steps like this. Same thing if I were, you know, same thing with, with yours. If you're taking your diagonal steps, you're yeah. Whatever. Not diagonal steps. You're yeah. taking your straight steps and it's at a little wider angle. So, so I tried to just it, kick it, it regular, like if normal. If that's the way you're going to do it, yeah. you've got to do it so many times For that sure. you build that confidence that you know you're doing it right. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing is you have to have conviction and confidence in it yeah. if you're going to do it that way. I'm definitely confident in it. I've just never been told minor details that are yeah. gonna, you, you said I was too wide, so I'm gonna fix that. And now yeah. I'm, gonna rem I'm gonna remember that every single time. Do you have different uh, ball tilt or you kick it the same every single time? I like kick it the same one, way every you, single time. Would you have your holder like- The only thing going? I would do is, is I would have my holder try to keep the ball relative to the target line. Yeah, so like this one, you would do it as if you were kicking like this. Exactly. Oh, I'm just, that one just so mentally it, got me. Might have scared you a little bit. So I normally only do that with uh, like one steps and no steps because it kind of gets in your head a little. Yeah. So let's not mess too much with that. But what I want you to try to do here is since you tend to swing across, let me see if you can extend your foot just inside that right upright. I'm not saying kick the ball there. Right. I'm saying try to keep my follow through from coming across. Okay. I can tell you fought to do that, right? Yeah. What did that ball feel like on your foot? It was way better. That's the best. Really probably good, the best contact-wise. It wasn't yeah. the greatest ball that I hit. I mean, it went in, but so, like, it's not the best ball I hit, but it felt the best. So what that did is it fought you from coming outside in across the ball, yep. and it kept you inside out. Now, the ball veered off a little to the right, but it stayed straight, right? Yep. The ball didn't have any hook to it. No, it was just true. Now do the same thing going down the middle. Your swing path was okay. Yeah. You got a little bit of turf. Yeah. Okay, I think there's a little bit of soft stuff going on here with the turf, but your swing path was where it needed to be because where'd yeah. the ball end up? That was, Dead that center. was the best ball today, probably. Yeah, but honestly, guys in the NFL, very few guys live in A-plus world. Very few guys live in A-world. Yeah. Most of them live in B-plus. Right. And B-plus is still pretty damn good for most of these guys, but they have to learn not to be negative because it's not an A or an A-plus. Right. So B plus world, you just want to avoid the B minuses and the C's, all that. I know C's get degrees, but when you're kicking, you I get lucky with C's. 
you know what I'm saying? C's are lucky. I feel like on that one, focused on the follow through aspect, I feel like a lot of it, I've been so mentally focused because we're out here working, like I'm just gonna swing through the ball and everything's gonna happen. Yeah. And I'm kicking terrible balls. That one I just tried to, I'm a skip through guy. Yeah. So I just kind of focused on like the latter half, that's, you can't get away from a follow through. Yeah. Shoot a basketball like this. Ab ab absolutely. It. When I watch this back, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I've been just ending it there this entire time, but you haven't seen me in person, so you wouldn't have picked up on it but I'm definitely yeah. I feel like that's what keeps my swipe down the line almost is I'm here and then I'm here yeah not that drastic but you get what I mean yeah I think having such a large presence on the internet is going to bring some awareness but I definitely think you still have to find a way to get in front of some coaches there are some regional combines there's some guys out here that have these invitational combines where they bring NFL coaches and pro level coaches to come see guys and evaluate guys I think that's ultimately going to be the ticket to get the exposure of eyewitness from these coaches and scouts but I think the awareness uh, is there I mean and I think we've all seen that Adam can hit a really good ball. It's just a matter of being able to do that in front of the right people. You need to do, because you haven't kicked in a game in so long, when's the last time you did a slow jog from the sideline and lined up and kicked a field goal like it was a game situation? I haven't done slow jogs. I'll do like thunder reps. Where okay. It's, um, like the May Day last. Yeah, 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 okay. Hurry up, That's great. I, kick, I will tell you this though. I practice those a lot. Yep. In four years of starting in high school. I going to do them. Four years of college, 15 years in the NFL, two years of preseasons but not playing in the NFL. All that time, I never had one mayday field goal. Always practice it. Always yep. practice weird situational things. Always have those in your brain. But you need to practice that it's fourth down, middle of the quarter, mm -hmm. jogging out with tempo, figuring out what's my tempo, how fast to slow do I jog, whatever it is, setting up your steps, whatever it is you do, because the first time you get into a game, what that does is it creates the, the buildup and the crescendo of this is a special moment and you don't want that. You wanna practice it enough, at least five times on kicking days, where you can feel like, I'm just gonna go out and kick this like it's a normal fourth down, okay? Because that then creates that comfort zone that when you finally get to do it, you've done it and it's yep. and it's normal versus Perfect. I haven't done this since Montana, you know? Like you, you need to like know that that feeling. But hey, I appreciate you coming out here. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I hope y'all learned something along the way. Obviously, he dropped a lot of knowledge that I didn't even have. And y'all saw that he got me to where I was missing field goals left. Everything was going wrong. And then we fixed it. We got the mental right. That's the hardest part of kicking, I think, is the mental side of it. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Let me know if y'all learned something down in the comments, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace. I think it's obvious he's got a very strong leg. When he's able to pull the body mechanics into a consistent flow that could fit inside of a mold to keep that consistent, I think he's going to be even better. I don't think that he's reached his maximum potential yet because once he reaches that, I think he's going to be up there to compare with some NFL kickers. I'm not a fan of Adam taking the diagonal steps. I showed him how I would like him to do the steps that I would prefer, the three back and two over. But if you do it, you've just got to be consistent. So I like kind of working with him to help make sure he found a consistent way to do those. I know there's been other guys who have been successful doing it. It's just not my favorite, but I'm not the one kicking, he is. I think overall, he's got a good linear swing path with his quad coming through the plane of the ball. There's just a few times where I see him swing across, but a lot of kickers do that. I think a lot of kickers sometimes get their shoulders a little over involved. In the long run, I think he still has a pretty smooth swing and it's really a pretty good good baseline that if you just finish off some of the, the rough edges that really aren't that bad, I think he's going to have a very high potential. A few things I'd like to see him work on is I'd like to keep his foot a little more solid through contact. I'd like to keep that swing path a little bit more extended towards the target instead of cutting across so soon. And then I'd like to see just a little bit more of the upper body uh, quietness as we go through the follow through so his body can get a little bit more linear push down the field. The path to the NFL from where he's at, even from where an All-American at the biggest university in the country is going to be a hard path. I mean, there's 32 people in the world on any given Sunday that kick a football in the NFL. So it's not easy for anyone. I think he's got a hill to climb up. By no means does that mean it's impossible. I think if he cleans up just a couple things, gets very consistent, goes to a couple of these free agent combines that are out there, I think he can show what he can do. And I think there's a good possibility that he could get that opportunity once he's ready for that. Does he have what it takes? 